What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we have a cool new optic. This is the Aimpoint Duty RDS. If you followed any of our content recently on tall mounts, this is optic, it's for you guys. But before we get into the talking about the Aimpoint Duty RDS, let me tell you a little bit about what we do here at RDR. We're a soft goods manufacturer. We specialize in plate carriers, placards, chest rigs, a full line of professional grade canine gear, as well as EDC belts, two-piece battle belts, Safran holster mods, a whole bunch of stuff that you can find on our website at rdrgear.com. So back to the Aimpoint RDS duty. This is a pretty unique dot. Um, it's been out for a minute. I'm late to the game on this one, but not too bad. But I wanted to pick this one up because recently we posted some content of why I'm no longer using uh, super tall mounts like the Unity Fast Mount. But this mount here is from Aimpoint. It is a basically a more budget version of the T1, T2 type footprint. It comes with own mount, front cap, rear cap, and we're gonna talk a little bit about why this cap is not clear and this cap is clear. So we'll talk about that in a minute. A couple of things I like on this one versus a T2. Number one, I do like the fact that it's flush fit on the adjustments. Uh, there's no more cap shoot. If you've ever owned a T1 or T2, and you've lost your top cap to the adjustment, getting a replacement is a chore. So it's definitely nice that these are flush fit. You do need the tool as normal to adjust the windage and elevation. The tool for the windage elevation is also your mounting tool to mount the dot to your rifle. Uh, this is your adjustment knob up and down. We're gonna talk about that, but that's one of my features I actually do like. Um, and we'll talk about one of the things that I really don't like. The optic mounting is kind of almost true co-witness to kind of lower one third. But for regular Joes like us, that's probably kind of a hindrance. Uh, there's a couple, I know T-Rex Arms made a conversion chart for it that you can go to their uh, website. I believe they have it on their website posted. So all the different mounts, because even though this is a mount that comes with the the duty rds it is a standard t2 footprint it's just slightly taller if you look down this area here um, let me give you the overhead this area right through here it's slightly taller than a standard t2 or t1 so it does give you a bit of a wonkiness in regards to height with certain mounts which also does translate to magnifiers. So you're going to have to kind of play with that um, usually in a magnifier taking out the one-third spacer will help get those things lined up. Um, but again, it does come with its own mount. This benefit in this package right here is where I think in the law enforcement side, and that's where they were kind of going with this in regards to some of the departments, like for example, here in Utah. For here in Utah, a department that's running a red dot on a rifle uh, has to be able to co-witness the irons and the red dot in the same time. So when you run your flip up irons, you must be able to co-witness all three together. By having this mount in the position that it's in and the kind of true co-witness slash minor lower one third, when you run this dot, you are dead on the money. So you're hovering over a front post. Once you kind of drop your head down, you are now 100% co-witness between front sight, rear sight, and dot. So that's one of the benefits in regards to this particular design. I think that's where they were going with the uh, features because one of the other features that this dot has that I feel that was driven towards law enforcement is the fact that the front cap is occluded, meaning that it is not clear like the rear cap. As you guys can see this here, this one is rear clear, this one is black. So if you are running these, for example, you get the rifle out, out of the car, and you go, to, you're, I'm dead on the money, and you'll see in today's video, we're shooting and making hits with the cap closed. And by it being occluded, once you pick that rifle up, you are still, oh, you can run it, and now you're good to go. And that is simply just a reason I feel that this was designed for the law enforcement aspect because it might be closed in the cruiser, roof rack, whatever case may be, and simply having that a closure, you're gonna look right through it, no issue whatsoever. I also look at the button design. If you looked at any T2 in the past, to adjust it, we had to come off the gun, 
and go to here, right? Having the adjustments right here, I can simply come off their gun. If I'm on fire control, I can come back and I can adjust my brightness to whatever I need. I can bump it, turn it on, whatever. It's right here to, I can stay on the gun and simply be ready to roll and adjust my brightness as I need. So that's something that I feel this dot, as many products out there, I feel this really, as in the name, Aimpoint Duty, this is the consumer market was the law enforcement side of things um, or someone who just wanted a rifle that wasn't really truly uh, gonna have a dot that was much taller uh, in regards to the mounts. I really like this um, for simply, if you were not into anything taller for night vision or heads up, it is, you do have kind of a more on the stock, so to speak, but you aren't up here and you don't have that kind of hovering cheek weld per se, you have a good stock placement. Stock is in the pocket of the shoulder. You're gonna head down a little bit, but you still have a decent upright head display, but not as much as maybe a tall mount or a 187, 193, et cetera. But at the end of the day, if you were looking for a patrol duty optic for your duty rifle as a patrolman, patrol woman, patrol person, what do you wanna call it? This would be the way to go. Uh, price point for these street price, you're like in 520. Uh, 525-ish, uh, so that's with the dot, caps, and mount. So you're good to go there. Battery life, you're on 30,000 hours. I think they say on se uh, setting seven. Most people, are, for daytime brightness, you're probably gonna be eight, maybe nine. So you might be a smidge lower, but that's still a ton of hours on battery life. Um, and again, all you need out the box, ready to go. Aim point duty, for 550, considering a T2 is or 525 to 550, I think it is, considering a T2 is over $800 and you don't get a mount with that usually. Um, this is a great option to look at, as I mentioned earlier, especially for anybody working in law enforcement or simply just wants a high quality optic for a little less money. Now, there's gonna be the guys out there who are gonna say, oh, look at Hollow Sun, look at you know all the other lower mount optics. Absolutely. There are other optics well under that $500 price point. You also have to understand what you're getting with Aimpoint. This is a very proven, rugged, robust dot. Uh, this thing is, you're gonna get your money's worth, hands down. Uh, again, if you are wanting to go cheaper, you have options, that's your choice. But if you are a professional who's carrying a rifle as part of your job, um, going to something that's a little more proven like an Aimpoint might be a better solution is definitely my suggestion for you. But if you're budget conscious, do your due diligence, shop, find a dot that works for you. If you've seen me run other rifles, the Hollow Sun 403R is one of those op optics out there that you can get. But again, aim point has a track record and you can't go wrong with that optic. So guys, that is the aim point RDS duty. Uh, I'm a fan. I can definitely say this is the optic for that professional end user at a budget price point. If you made it this far on the video, guys, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, especially. That helps me and Chris be out in our content creation for the YouTube channel. It also will help your YouTube algorithm show you more content like this and other two-way friendly channels. So until next time, be well, take care.